Are you about to start a clinical rotation as a nurse practitioner student? Or you just graduated from nurse practitioner program and are about to start working as a nurse practitioner? And maybe you don't know how to write prescriptions exactly. Well, this episode is for you. In this episode, I will teach you the basics of how to write prescriptions. Hi, I'm Nikki Miura. I'm a family nurse practitioner in Hawaii. I mainly specialize in women's health and practice at community health center and a private practice. Prescribing medication are one powerful way for nurse practitioners to help patients overcome diseases and conditions. I prescribe medication every day as a part of treatment plans. I preset family nurse practitioner students and realize that Oftentimes, students don't learn how to write prescriptions in their programs. This is not surprising because I also didn't learn how to write prescription when I was a student. We all take pharmacology class, but the class focuses more on the science side, which is also important. But we need to also learn practical side, like how to write prescriptions. So in this quick tutorial, I will teach you how to write prescriptions in outpatient setting to prepare for your clinical rotations and working as a new grad nurse practitioner. In this DNA age, most of us use electronic health records and prescriptions are sent to pharmacies electronically. But there may be a time that you are away from computers and have to call in prescriptions or have to write written prescriptions because your computer system is down. So it's good to know the basics of how to write prescriptions. So let's get right into it. First part of a prescription is prescriber's contact information, which includes prescriber's full name and office number. Second part of prescription is patient's name and their identifiers. So this includes patient's full name and date of birth. Something to note is to use the name that is used for their health insurance. So medication can be covered by patient's insurance. For written prescriptions, you also need to add address and phone number. But when you are calling in prescriptions, you may not be asked about address or phone number of patients. Third part is name of medication. Generally, it doesn't matter whether you write the brand name such as Tylenol or generic name such as acetaminophen. But if you want to prescribe the brand name only, you need to write or tell specifically no generics or brand only. Fourth part of prescription is strength. This is about the dosage or strength of the medicine. Is it 500 mg or 1000 mg? If you don't know what types of strengths are available for the medication you are prescribing, you can go to up to date website and type medication and look for drug information. Then scroll down to preparation section and information is there under U.S. dosage form section. I hope you are enjoying this episode. Before we go back, I want to quickly mention that I'm giving a gift to you for listening to this episode. I'm giving a free PDF nurse practitioner job interview prep checklist. This checklist is full of questions that you're likely to be asked during job interviews as a nurse practitioner and some tips on how to prepare for them. With this downloadable PDF, you can prepare for interviews well so you feel confident and stand out from other candidates to get the job that you really want. To get this free PDF nurse practitioner job interview prep checklist, you can go to usa.jnpproject.com slash interview. Again, usa.jnpproject.com slash interview. Now, let's get back to the episode. Fifth component of prescription is form. You need to specify form of medication. Is it tablet or capsule? Is it cream or ointment? Information of what forms of medications are available can be also found on U.S. dosage form section on up-to-date website. 
sixth component of prescription is quantity. How many or how much per dose do you want to give? If you want to give cephalexine 500 mg tablet one tab four times a day, then it means you give one tablet per dose. For topical medication, it's a little bit different. You may instead specify small amount or one applicator full. For example, if I want to prescribe triumcinolone, which is a steroid, a 0.1% cream, I might specify apply small amount to the affected area. Seventh component is route. This part describes how medication should be taken or delivered. You can either use English or Latin abbreviation, but some suggest to use English only with no Latin abbreviation to avoid medication errors, so I'll teach you both. Common route abbreviation for prescription include PO, which means orally or by mouth, PR means per rectum, IM means intramuscular. Eighth component of a prescription is frequency. This section simply describes how often you want the patient to take or use the medication. Examples include daily, every other day, or twice daily. For frequency, we also use English and Latin abbreviation. Some examples of Latin abbreviation for frequency include BID twice a day or TID three times a day. We also use Q as in queen, which means once. So if we write QHS, that means every bedtime. And if we write Q for H, this means every four hours. Again, some organizations recommend against using Latin abbreviation, especially for QD, which means daily, or QOD, which means every other day. We sometimes prescribe medication that are needed to be used as needed. In that situation, you can spell out as needed or write PRN. Important thing to note here is to write reasoning of taking or using medication so patients would know when they need to take or use the medication. So if you want to prescribe ibuprofen, you might write prescriptions such as ibuprofen 800 mg, one tablet by mouth, every eight hours as needed for headache. Eighth component of prescription is total quantity. This part tells a pharmacist how many pills should be dispensed or how many bottles, how many inhalers, how much creams or topical medication. Typically, you write the number after shark. If you write prescriptions by hand, it's highly recommended to spell out the number after the sharp sign and the number because this helps to prevent someone tapering with the prescription and add extra number to get extra dosage. So example will be dispense sharp 30 and then in parentheses, you write down 30 tablet. Tenth component of prescription is number of refills. Last instruction on prescription informs how many times a patient can use the same prescription. As a prescriber, you want to consider how long patient can be on the medication without being in touch with you to ensure the medication is still appropriate for their treatment plan. So for example, if a woman has been on birth control pill for some time and has no problem with the pill and wants to continue the pill for preventing pregnancy and there is no contraindication to take the medicine, you may want to prescribe three packs of birth control pill pack and with three refills that's equal to one year supply. On the other hand, if you want to treat urinary tract infection with antibiotic, you probably don't want to give refills unless under a special circumstance because of concern for developing resistance to antibiotic due to overuse of antibiotic. Last part of prescription is signature of prescriber and credentials. In this section, you sign the prescription and write down the date of signature. And also you want to make sure there is information about your NPI number, DAA license number if you have, and oral code in some state. I hope this episode was helpful to you. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up 
and subscribe to our channel. Also, we are planning on developing a program to boost confidence of students and new grad nurse practitioners. And the program will include more detailed advice on how to write appropriate prescriptions for safe and effective care. So be sure to sign up for our email list and you will be notified when the program becomes available. All right, I'll see you in the next episode. Aloha.